Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're going to play with specialty grains today. Now, if you listen to the audio podcast a few episodes ago, Zot O'Connor from up in uh, the Seattle area. SeaTac. C- is that what it is? Uh, that's what I say. It makes <laughs> me sound like I'm a world traveler. Where are you going? I'm going to SeaTac. <laughs> Wasn't that a series in the uh, 80s uh, <laughs> involving right. a helicopter? Margot Kidder. I think, she was, <laughs> I think she was in it. But, uh, okay, Vizzotto O'Connor was on the audio show, and he had done an experiment because he had, he had brewed a beer with uh, uh, liquid malt extract and Cascade hops and no specialty grains. And he said it was blah. I think he said it was blah. Blah. So he said his idea was, why don't I try to dose... Not dos equis, but dos my <laughs> dos uh, samples of this beer with uh, teas made from different specialty grains to see how the recipe should have been different. And I thought that's a great idea, and so we did a show. Now, uh, keep in mind that uh, these are teas that were just steeped. They haven't been boiled, and they haven't gone through fermentation as you generally would with you know specialty right. grains. So it's not an exact comparison, but right. I think you can get some really good uh, indications of the color and the character of each of these specialty grains. So what I did, here we have uh, 20 Lovabon Crystal, we have 90 Lovabon Crystal, mm-hmm. and we have chocolate malt. And what I did was I took an ounce or 28 grams of each of these okay. and steeped them in about... 16 ounces or a pint of water, and I don't know what the metric is on that, uh, at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or around 65C for 20 minutes. And in metric, that's 20 minutes. So, <laughs> and then, so that's, that's what we got here. And I, and I used a, uh, a French press coffee maker to mm. strain those out. And uh, here we go. This is what we have. Okay. So uh, I guess maybe we should try the sample these as they are. To get a sense of the flavor, sans beer. Right. Okay. So you want to start on that end, and I'll start on this end? Okay. All right. Smells like postum. Mm hmm. And postum is an instant coffee, right? Yeah, it's kind of an instant. It's not coffee, it's like grains. I haven't had postum in like 50 years. But it's roasted to mimic. Yeah, coffee. yeah, okay. it's a non-coffee coffee. Well, it's, this is that's very probably very similar to what you got there. Post to me, mm. and it tastes pretty good. To be honest, it's kind of good. <laughs> you I mean, found your new morning drink. It, it would be kind of a your decaffeinated it's coffee. It's very coffee-like. Uh, this is more kind of fresh grain flavors. Mm-hmm. Um, it smells like you're just sticking your head into the grain bin. Um, That's very nice. It's not. It's not. Um, not overly. It's not roasty at all. But it has kind of. It has kind of a good mouth feel. So, what's your report on the ninety level bond? Uh, it's like. Um, it's like walking through a hay field in June in Kansas. It's just kind of, you know, grass-like, and it's very pleasant. I mean, it's huh. really. You know, take a sip. It's. It's. I like the flavor a lot of that. You know, it. It really tastes like grain. Um, it really tastes like mm. the farm. It reminds me of being a kid down on my grandmother's farm, really, and kind of being in the hay and all that. And, and so, uh, Do you write beer labels? I, no. <laughs> I'm working on the J. Peterman catalog, though. As I, <laughs> as I wore my Patagonian uh, urban sombrero, I tasted the grain of the Kansas wheat fields. Uh, I am getting, I'm get, I'm getting a little bit of... Um, uh, just a, a tiny bit of kind of a dark fruit flavor that I didn't get in that one. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Cut. Sorry. I couldn't, uh, couldn't chop that out. There'll be a beep over a <laughs> Gosh. Oh, okay. Thank goodness it's Friday. Okay, so now what we, what we need is a, a single malt and single hop beer. Uh, is there such a thing? Hmm, where can we get one of the... Oh, Smash well, we just happen beer. to have one right here. Oh, my the goodness. The new Albion Ale. Uh, Do you have Popener? Design. I've got the Popener right here. Okay. 
We call it the Popener because it, uh, a friend of ours gave uh, uh, gave my wife and me uh, this, and it's got a picture of, uh, that I keep slapping. I she probably shouldn't slap the <laughs> yep. deceased post, uh, Pope's uh, face, but anyway, uh, this opener was bought on the roof of St. Peter's Basilica. Wow. Now, uh, we have a beer. Should we pour a whole, whole beer each? I'm in the mood. <laughs> God knows I need it. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a fun week, hasn't it? Oh, boy. Don't even get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching the news. God. Um... All right, so okay. why don't you get started? What, what would you like to dose with? We've got little plastic pipettes there, that one for each flavor. I love their first record. <laughs> the pipettes? The pipettes. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> I mean, they had the doo-wop down. They had the little black dresses. <laughs> Wasn't Pat Boone a pipette? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, okay. if you notice, the, uh, the 20 Love of Bond is not too far from the, the beer, mm -hmm. as it is. Well, so so we're gonna we're gonna dose this and then drink this entire beer, <laughs> and then we're gonna dose this and drink this entire beer. If you wanna, and then after. we're gonna dose. <laughs> I'm not sure how to do it. Well, first of all, taste the beer. Okay. Remind yourself what you got. Bright, um, sort of citrusy, uh, florally. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna choose the the. What I'm going to do, you squeeze the top and then you draw some in there. Okay. And we'll dose. Uh, we'll need more than that. Oh, yeah. See, it's going to take a... See, if we were scientists, we'd be... We would measuring be, this. You would be keeping track. Yeah. So here. Brad Sturgeon's turning over in his grave right now. <laughs> it's like, I thought I taught these guys. I did three pipettes. I did four. I think I did three. <laughs> well, look will you it. correct me and... Oh, look at in the, the comments. Look at, okay, no wait, the, we'll put that one there. Yeah. So it's not contaminated. But okay. Okay. So I did four so it, pipettes. So it yours isn't it. It's only slightly darker. Right. It is a little darker. Um, let's see what happens. I think I need some more. We'll put about this much. Um, my <laughs> I can tell a difference. The four, Already? Yeah, I can tell a flavor difference. There's not enough color difference that if I didn't know. If I didn't have a, a control, I wouldn't know. But it is a little darker, and mm. uh, I can I can pick up the chocolate notes in this already. Now that's different. Which tells me a little goes a long way. A little goes a long way. Now does it does it does it clash with that style? Does the chocolate malt clash with the pale ale? Not style? this level, but I but I'll bet you if I did the, you know, if I really put quite a lot. Do a of dunk. Them, Okay, so that was about two ounces, I, I would say, mm. roughly. And, of course, now it's quite a bit darker. Right. Oh, and that's good. I mean, I like that. Take a okay. sip. I don't have Here, to you try. Use. You try mine. Okay. My, the rash is healing, though. I was going to say, my cold sore is almost gone. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like that. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. There's, um, I'm trying to, uh, it, uh, mm. roasty and, uh, the, the, it's roasty and, and hoppy at the same time, and uh, it doesn't clash like I thought it would. No, I, I don't think it does. And this is a, um, this is just right. I mean, it really adds some body and, right. Um, now we don't have, I'll get another. I'll, I'll mm. go. Don't look. Go here because it's closer. You should try this at home. This is fun. Yeah, this is actually pretty interesting. Um, and we got to try the twenty. And I'm a. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Dose some of that in there. A tincture. This isn't really a tincture because a tincture is like with alcohol, right? Uh. So you get a. You get the. The had, flavoring in it. I had a tincture when I was in junior high, but <laughs> cleared up. Yeah. <laughs> now I put a good helping of that in there. Mmm. It's more kind of grainy. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. It's still good, though. I like that. I like it a lot. Now, it would be interesting to uh, measure these. Oh, and you could also combine. You could like put some, some of that in say. there, and, and you could sort of design a recipe, and it would be fun to uh, then go back and brew that with those mm -hmm. ratios of the grains in there and see if after fermentation it actually uh, stood up. Yeah, for sure. Um, I like all, all three of these alterations mm -hmm. quite well. Um, I don't know that I like them better than the original beer. They're just different. Right. Um, but it does speak to why do you use specialty grains. Right. And, you know, if you're a beginning brewer or even not a beginning brewer, sometimes you just ask those basic questions. Why am I doing this? Yeah. And when you do an experiment like this, it, it helps to clarify and crystallize all those all those meanings, all those reasons. Right. Damn, I'm deep. <laughs> Actually, I'm stepping in it. I'm so deep. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, try this yourself. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, it's not. It's not hard, and you have an excuse to drink some beer. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers. Happy brewing. That too. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com.